Just recently, the Canadian government announced that it would subsidize to the tune of a billion dollars, the $1.7 billion, 117 kilometer underwater uh, transmission connection known as the Lake Erie Connector. The problem is that the benefits that the federal government is selling, such as the trade of Ontario clean electri electricity to American markets, doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to talk to uh, Professor Mark Winfield of York University about that. So welcome to the interview, Mark. Good morning. Now, maybe you could give us an overview of the Lake Erie Connector and why this is problematic. Well, it, it is a high capacity cable that would run under Lake Erie, uh, supposedly connecting the Ontario system into um, into the US systems, I, I guess it would be depending on where it lands, uh, PGM potentially. Um, and the challenge here is that it, it's not at all clear um, what it is that would be exported from Ontario. Uh, because at least where we're heading at the moment, uh, the ISO is anticipating that our supply situation will start to tighten about the middle part of this decade. Uh, particularly as Pickering closes, but also as we have units at uh, uh, Darlington and Bruce coming offline for refurbishment, uh, there's not going to be very much surplus capacity. And indeed, the expectation is that what will be run in their place is natural gas fired generation, uh, which is no cleaner uh, than what has been coming to dominate systems south of the border. Uh, so where the environmental upside in this is, is far from clear to me. Yes, and, uh, and there's a fair amount of public money in, in, uh, in this project and uh, over, well over 50%, which uh, so there's certainly, uh, it's a public interest story. And it seems to argue that, uh, that even after Darlington uh, and, and Bruce come back online in the, in the 2030s, and so let's say then that there is a modest surplus of power, or maybe even that there isn't, but there is gas fired capacity that could be used. Is, you know, is that the plan then that the, the, uh, this uh, surplus gas capacity, th th there's quite a bit of it now, uh, there would be less once the, the nuclear plants go down for the rest of this decade. But then in the 2030s, we then fire those up and run them full time to supply this American market with, you know, gas fire that does that seems to go against uh, the policies of both the federal government here in Canada, and the American government uh, south of the border. It would seem so. I mean, this this seems one of the few potential rationales. And then, then even then, there's all kinds of uncertainties in terms of what might happen in terms of domestic electricity demand in Ontario, particularly if we see any significant movement in the direction of electrification of transportation or space heating, uh, that would very quickly soak up whatever surplus there might be in Ontario. So yes, one, one is kind of left wondering, you know, is this, is this a scheme on behalf of uh, commercial owners of those gas plants, which will be off contract and, and capital costs long retired and likely still some life left in them. Um, is, is this essentially a, to sort of try and do this on a merchant basis, which again, it makes, makes absolutely no sense from a, a climate or environment perspective at all. Uh, it certainly doesn't help in terms of the situation in Ontario and, and indeed you're not displacing you're, you're displacing like for like, most likely in the US. So I, I, I'm not sure what the rationale is here. The only possible one is, yeah, we're, we're gonna have these paid for gas plants uh, into which we could bid very low into US markets. Seems to be about the only rationale I could see. And then again, that one defends also totally on what happens to natural gas prices a decade or more out, and and at this stage, that's uh, you know that's 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 a, a long shot. And I would I wouldn't want to go making predictions what's going to happen there. Right, and when the uh, Canadian uh, Infrastructure Bank received uh, when it was created and received the federal money uh, from the updated climate plan last year. Uh, my understanding was that that money was earmarked for or some of the money was earmarked for electricity inner ties, but they were between provinces. 
not between not between countries. They were and to the east of Ontario, of course, you have Quebec with the tremendous hydropower resources and an inner tie between Ontario and Quebec would make perfect sense and uh, and would be I think a rational way to use federal money if you were going to build an infrastructure instead of pouring a billion dollars of taxpayers' money into a very I don't know suspect project running north and south. Well, well, suspect in terms of the economics and suspect in terms of the environmental contribution, certainly. Um, yeah, no, there's there's all kinds of east-west opportunities. Uh, we were involved in quite extensive co uh, discussions with colleagues in Quebec about the Ontario-Quebec relationship. And indeed, there have been moves happening already to reinforce those interconnections. Uh, there's a whole conversation to unfold in Atlantic Canada. Uh, particularly around the Atlantic Loop uh, and Muskrat Falls, which we're, whether, whether it makes sense or not, we seem to be stuck with it at this stage. Uh, and so there are questions there about how do you optimize that? And then there's also sort of east-west conversations between Manitoba and Ontario and among the Western provinces as well. And there's been lots of discussion about those kinds of interconnections. And so it, it's again, very surprising. I mean, it's as if somebody either wasn't very clued in to what was happening in, in the electricity and energy conversation in Ontario and indeed more widely in Eastern Canada, because the other factor is that Hydro-Quebec is in conversations with New England and New York to establish north-south ties of its own. Um, so where this fits relative to those connections, I, I'm, I'm really at a bit of a loss, particularly given there already are interconnections into Michigan and, and Ohio as, as, as already. Well, it's a head scratcher for both of us. And uh, I think it's time to ask the Infrastructure Bank for an interview and maybe get some answers. Thank you very much for this, Mark. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Happy to chat.